What's up guys? We've got a great video blog for you, man. This comes from my man Marcus. He's in Atlanta, Georgia. He wants to know about motivation, man. Where do you go to find that motivation? To keep the fight alive. When you're down that path and all you're seeing is rejection and adversity and demise. How do you continue that path when the monkey on your back feels like a 500 pound gorilla weighing you down? How do you put one foot in front of the other? Continue the journey and that endeavor of life and cross that finish line. Let's read his email. We'll get into this. Greg, your site has helped me tremendously to transform my body, and I cannot thank you enough for that. I don't want to discredit all the amazing workouts and nutritional information on your site, but what you have done for me mentally outweighs all the physical gains I'm so proud of. Your motivation and inspiration has really changed my life, and inertly changed my family's life as well. The outlook on life is so contagious that I find myself going to your site every day to keep the motivation alive inside of myself. You do that for me. I cannot thank you enough. I guess I was wondering, where do you go for motivation to keep the fire alive? And what do you turn to after a bad day to ensure you stay on track? Marcus, Atlanta, Georgia. Marcus, you answer that question, you just answer life. That's the million dollar question right there. And it's really hard to answer. I'm gonna do my best shot for you. You say, you talk about motivation, how to find motivation. And you say, where do I go physically? Marcus, I don't go anywhere physically for motivation. I go there visually. Let me explain that. If your mouth is a window to your body, and the nutrition that comes through your mouth enables your body to grow strong and have a capable fundamental structure of whatever you want to do physically, your eyes are the window to your soul of belief, inspiration, the willpower. And just like when you put something in your mouth and you chew it, it can either enhance the physique of yourself or be the demise depending on what you're eating. The same goes true with what you see. There's a visual diet out there that's good and bad. There's negative energy if you look at it and you focus on it, you allow that to come in, it'd be a demise of your willpower demise of your self-confidence, what you can be and what you believe in. You focus on the negative so much, you start to believe that negative shit exists in you. That's a negative, unhealthy diet, visually. You must focus on the positive things in life. Allow them to see you on the... When you're going through your day, guys, there's a million of these examples out there. When you see them, stop yourself in the tracks. Give credit. Remember the name of that person that did something with a common man, overcame the odds and did the impossible. When you see that, take notice and remember that because you will use it later in your own journey when you're feeling fatigued and weak. That'll be the spark that keeps you going on that journey when that gorilla is on top of you to ensure you get through that finish. But having a sound diet physically a sound diet visually, the ability and the power of what you believe in to be true, and then building the body of which can make you anything that you want capable, is only two thirds of the equation. There's one big missing element that Marcus is talking about here. There's no name for that element. Call it the X factor if you want. But the X factor must exist. Even if you have the healthiest physical diet and the healthiest visual diet, it's not enough. Those two are like a sailboat out at sea with no harbor to sail for. In that situation, the best wind is no wind because you don't know where you're going. That's the X factor. The want. What do you want in life? physical body to do something, you have the mental capacity to believe in it, then what the fuck do you want? When you want something that collides all three of them into the trifecta, it makes the uncommon man remembered for generations as he achieved the impossible and changed the basic framework, the blueprint of society in which we live our life. The one is in all 
all have the same seed. And it's the trials and tribulations through life that either make that seed blossom or not. How do we feed that seed? Well, there's a lot of different ways. Just like eating, there's good foods you can eat that make the body strong. Just like the, the visual nutrition that comes in is positive stories of people overcoming the odds. The X Factor. The nutrition content is two things, two recipes. One's fear, one's failure. up enough money, enough coin to get on a train out to Hollywood back in the day. Went to Universal with another little drawing he had of a rabbit named Oswald. Universal liked it a lot, man. I started talking to him, negotiating a deal. He got all excited. It's my chance. It's my chance. All along, Universal went underneath him and silently patented Oswald the rabbit from under him. He didn't have the money to patent it. Universal just took the idea and ran with it, left him on his ass. Again, failure. Still, he found the test of fortitude to stand back up, continue fighting for what he wanted. And what was so strong, it outweighed all the despair, all the negative energy, all the failures, all the adversities and rejections and disbelief from everybody else. His belief was stronger than the crowd's disbelief. So he continued on his path and he came with another character, a mouse. It was like, you're crazy, man. That mouse is going to scare ladies and kids. No one's going to want to see that mouse. He said, I think so. I think, I think they will. So much so, I'm going to name that mouse Mickey. I think you know the rest of the Walt Disney story. Walt Disney Empire rakes in billions of dollars every single year. Through TV and film and theme parks. 1996, they bought ABC. Just so happened ABC with a mother company of a small little newspaper called the Kansas City Star. To say success is the greatest form of revenge. And they felt pretty good for Walt. The company that fired him. He rose above it so much that the company that bought it, he bought that company. Nice. Like that. That's a good visual nutrition to soak in and remember. Of a guy who wanted something. So much so, that failure became his strength. Failure formed the other characters. Failure made him wiser. So in the final gold mine, he was ready for it, and he scored. Another kid growing up didn't even speak until the age four. Didn't even know how to read until age seven. He was so far behind in his peer group at a young age, he just called him stupid. Inability to learn the rock. So much so that they expelled him from the school. Had his parents pick him up, say, yo, he bring, he's bringing down the attention level of all the other students. Slowing the progress down of the collective group. Gotta go. Get out of here. Don't need that. They said he was mentally challenged. years old, he got fired again. Every job he tried, he got fired. So all he's seen in life is failure, rejection, all he knows. So much so, that when he found his want, what it was that he wanted, he continued to pursue it and pursue it and pursue it. And his dream and his idea failed over a thousand times. The same dream. Exactly. 1,093 times it failed until he finally got it right and the light bulb lit. I was telling 
Thomas Edison. Sure glad he kept going. Here's a guy that, once he found out his want, the nourishing of that want was fear and failure. It's all he knew. So of course he kept trying. I mean, when have you ever tried something over a thousand times and still continue the course? I can't say I ever have. This guy did. His want was so strong and so nourished by all the fear and all the failure he had his entire life. He knew nothing else to do. He never knew success. He just knew what he wanted. And failure is all he ever knew. So of course it failed. He's like, oh, no problem. It's an average fucking day. I'm going to keep on going. Every time it failed, the invention got better and better and better. So he kept going and going, finally it fucking lit. He had over a thousand other patents too, by the way. Remarkable. More visual encouragement for the willpower and belief inside what you can do. Another guy out of the Far East, he's an engineer, you know. He likes to work on cars and do engine stuff. And, you know, grease monkey dude. So he wants to get a job. He wants to get paid for what he loves. He knows what he wants. That's what he wants, man. So he goes to Toyota, the big car company in his area. He says, hey man, I'm an engineer, man. I can make some kick-ass engines and shit. And he comes in and they talk to him. And the Toyota's like, get the fuck out of here. You don't have the credentials. You don't have the experience. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. Who do you think you can get, get out of here? Waste our time. He's sent home with his tail between his legs. He still wants to be an engineer. Wanted to do it, you know, on the assembly line Toyota. They said no. He didn't stop. He kept going. So instead of being in the assembly line Toyota, he was in his garage doing it. Started making little scooters. <laughs> Liked it though, man. You know, that's what he wanted to do. So he did it in his garage. Scooters. Got on that scooter and drove it around town. The neighbors like, wow. Badass scooter, man. It's pretty cool. Let me try it. He tried it. It's pretty good. You know, the fuck Toyota, man. Why are you going to your own business, man? Be a little entrepreneur. Make scooters. And he's like, yeah, I love it. Why not? I'm going to do scooters. That's what he started with. That's not what he ended with. His last name was Honda. You know, there's countless stories out there of, of people that, um, that, that, that hit failure over and over again. And um, I bring that up because that's what, that's what creates the want, the desire, the, the demand for something to change. That gives you a directional path. So when you're on that sailboat out at sea, you know how to take the wind coming at you into your favor to sail in the direction you want. But you're not sailing into some harbor of a known point. No, you're gonna sail down uncharted waters. And why? Because those uncharted waters lead to undreamt shores of possibilities.